When you know one zero or root, you can use synthetic division to reduce your polynomial so that it can be factored further. So for example, number 17, when we look at that problem, if the instructions are to factor, what type of factoring would we attempt to use on this problem? Well, that would be to solve it. How, how could we factor it? We just grouping, okay? We just learned it the day before yesterday, grouping. Cubic, four terms, grouping. So if we start to group this, we're gonna get x plus five here, and we're gonna get x plus 12 here. That doesn't work. Those have to be the same linear factors there. So it looks like grouping, but it can't be factored by grouping. So we are told one of our zeros is two. So we are going to set up synthetic division with this problem, one, five, negative two, negative 24. Bring down the one, one times two is two, add five plus two is seven, seven times two is 14, add negative, negative two plus 14 is 12, 12 times two is 24, Negative 24 plus 24 is 0, which it should be because they told us 2 was a 0. Remember, we were learning remainder theorem yesterday. The remainder is the value of the function. Okay? Um, and that's x squared plus 7x plus 12. Can we factor that quadratic? Can we factor x squared plus 7x plus 12? Mm -hmm. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 4 is 7. So, if 2 is one of our zeros, as a factor, it's x minus 2. And then x squared plus 7x plus 12 is x plus 4 times x plus 3. I just factored that right there. Okay? So we just factored that cubic, 4 term cubic function without looking at our calculator without anything like that. We factored it completely. So we can also say, what are its other zeros? Two is one of its zeros. What are the other two? Negative four and negative three. Okay, negative four and negative three are the other zeros. Okay? Let's do 18. Okay, let's do 18. Again, looks like factoring by grouping. If we started to do it, we would not get the same linear factor. So we just need to jump to synthetic division you do not change the number. When something is a zero, you do not change it when you put it on the shelf. You only change it if you take it out of a linear factor. So bring down the one, multiply, we get three, add, we get negative four, multiply, we get negative 12, add, we get three, multiply, we get nine, add, we get zero, which we should. It was cubic, so now it's x squared, minus 4x plus 3. That is factorable as well. So x minus 3 is one of our factors. And x squared, who's asked to report? Uh, let's see here, what's that? x minus 3 and x minus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Um, don't forget if they're repeated like that, we write it squared. Okay, we write it squared. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, we're going to do synthetic division with an imaginary number. Put your seatbelts on. Here we go. All right. List our coefficients like we always do. You may want to space them out a little bit more than you normally do because we're going to need a little, little extra space here. Okay. Bring down the 1. We're going to multiply just like we always do. Okay. Uh, so te technically we're going to have to distribute this number to the imaginary number. Okay. Um, but when you distribute 1, it doesn't change anything. So it's just going to be negative 2 plus 4i. Okay. Now when you add, you'll only add like terms. So negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. 
you don't add anything to the 4i because we don't have anything to add to it. Now, here's where I'm going to let y'all go a little bit. When you go to multiply this times what's on the shelf, use your calculator, okay? Use your calculator. Put negative 4 plus 4i in parentheses. Now, we could pull this out. We've been doing it, okay? We did several of them a minute ago, but I'm just trying to save you some time, okay? Put it in parentheses. Negative 4 plus 4i in parentheses. Negative 2 plus 4i in parentheses. And let your calculator do it for you, okay? Negative 8 minus 24i. <coughs> Again, only add like terms. So 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. We don't have anything to add to the i. So same deal. Use your calculator. Ooh, numbers get a little bit, but that's okay. 104 plus 32i. Yes. Thank you. All right. Add negative 88. Your calculator will do that part for you, too. Okay. Multiply. Woo! Look at there. The eyes disappeared all of a sudden. Properties of imaginary numbers. Math is a wonderful thing, yes, sometimes. <laughs> All right. Now, who wants those imaginary numbers in there? Really yucky, right? So, what we started with a fourth degree. So, what have we reduced it to? Third degree, right? Cubic. I'm just going to write that kind of over here to the side so that I know. In the back of my head, this is a cubic function. Okay. Now, the same principle applies. Complex roots come in pairs. So I'm going to turn back around and I'm going to use what I've already done. I'm just going to start synthetic division again, but this time I'm going to do it with negative 2 minus 4i. Y'all do love me deep down. I know you do. <laughs> All right, so just keep all your work. You don't have to rewrite anything. Keep your work. Bring down the one, multiply. Ooh, look, the i's cancel. Negative four plus negative two, negative six. What'd you say? No, it doesn't, look. That one cancels too. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes. What are we supposed to do? Can we factor that? Can we factor x squared minus 6x plus 8? We can. x minus 4 times x minus 2. That's part of it. Uh, we got to figure out the other part. So we do have to do a little bit of work like we were doing before. Oh. Hang on. Hang on. But we know the outside and the inside cancel. So use your calculator. Ah. Okay, that gives us 20. Negative times negative is a positive. So, x squared plus 20 is the other part of this. Ta-da! We just factored that fourth degree polynomial. You should feel smart and accomplished. You can.